Joining us now, Republican Senator from Florida, Marco Rubio. He's the vice chair on the Senate Intelligence Committee. Um, Senator, just to start, uh, the scale of the evacuation that would be necessary here that's being called for is extraordinarily complex. Uh, are you concerned about the, the kind of burgeoning humanitarian crisis that may develop? Well, I think if it uh, does develop, it will be Hamas's fault. They, this is the playbook they have run repeatedly, and Hezbollah, to some extent, does the exact same thing. And that is they attack Israel, they kill a bunch of Jews, and then they retreat back into Gaza. They hide behind human shields deliberately. Uh, they have been messaging for days on their, when they had their TV network running and their radio stations telling people not to leave their homes. So these guys hide behind civilians. Then the attacks come in response, and, um, and unfortunately, people die. And then they run to the global press and say, look what horrible things Israel is doing, and everyone pressures Israel to stop. Hamas survives. They come back and kill more Jews again. That's the pattern that continues to repeat itself. So I think for days now, Israel, has, from the very beginning, has been messaging that, and they take extraordinary steps to try to avoid it. But when your killers are literally using human beings as shields and hide behind them, those guys are in the tunnels. They're down there in the system of tunnels they have with their own bunkers, their own uh, fuel supply, their own food supply, and they leave the civilians to die. It's their, these, these guys don't value life. They don't value any life, uh, but, and they certainly don't value the lives of their own people. And, and they want to be the government of their own country, uh, which, which you can only imagine. So, um, it, look, this is a very difficult situation. I just don't know what other option Israel has. How can they possibly coexist with an organization that doesn't just butcher babies, but has it express an explicit purpose of existing is, the, is to drive all Jews out of the region and create an, uh, a, a new country that stretches from the Mediterranean to the Jordan with no Jews and run by a fundamentalist Islamic government like right. Hamas. Senator, you, you're a, a leading foreign policy uh, voice inside your party in, in the Senate, along with being the vice chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee. To that point, and I know this is several steps ahead, but, but what happens then if... Hamas is uprooted, if it's decapitated, if it's defeated uh, in the frame of ISIS. That's a, that's a power vacuum there. That's a governance vacuum. What fills it in that region? Well, first of all, Hamas has not always governed over Gaza. They allegedly won an election back in 2006 and since then have not had another one. But do you have uh, faith been, in the they, Palestinian they, Authority to come in, given how they've operated in the West Bank? Well, that's the complexity of this whole situation, right? And that's when people talk about a two-state solution. In order to have that, you have to have somebody, some trusted party on the other side that you can work with. You cannot have a two-state solution or a negotiation with any entity that exists for the express purpose of your destruction. Now, I have my own problems with the Palestinian Authority and the things that they have done, but at least in their organizing principles, they, they acknowledge that there is a role to play for a Jewish state. Now, you know, I, I don't know how much they mean that. There's obviously some nuances involved in there. But Hamas, Hamas ex and exists for the express purpose of destroying Israel and, and eliminating the Jewish state. In fact, the Hamas argument, basically, to Palestinians is, trust us instead of, of the Palestinian Authority. We are even harsher than they are. We will kill more Jews. We will run them out of here. And, and we will create the, the Palestinian state that stretches all of what we know today to be Israel, not just the West Bank and not just Gaza. In some respects, these attacks and the ones from 2021 are as much a domestic play as they are an anti-Israeli play. It is them trying to position themselves as the most prominent uh, Palestinian uh, faction right. in the area. And, and, and they believe that kidnapping innocent civilians and murdering babies positions them to do that, to, to be in that role. And, and so I, I, I get the complexity of it. I, I am not going to pretend, and no one should pretend, that they have somewhere in their pocket some master plan that fixes all this. It is a deeply complex situation that stretches back, frankly, thousands of years. Right. Uh, that said, the one thing that's pretty clear is you cannot coexist with an entity that has armaments and the willingness to use them to slaughter your people. You just can't. And underscoring, I think, the complexity that you're talking about is kind of the moment we're in around the world, but also regionally. We've been showing pictures of this kind of day of protests that have been called for by a former Hamas leader. Um, th there's an accelerant in a situation, in a geopolitical situation right now that is, to be candid, seems very, very dicey. W what is your view of how this is going to play out broadly in the region? I don't, think any, yeah, I don't think anyone can tell you exactly how it's going to play out. Let me just say one thing. It is one thing to say, I am in favor of the Palestinian cause, or I think Palestinians are in charge, uh, should have their own country. It's one thing to say that. 
it's, it's, I think it's a bit naive at this point, but it's something that you can be a position. It is another to say, and I'm going to take to the streets at the beck and call, at the specific instruction of the group that just butchered a bunch of babies. Okay, that, those are two very different things. It's disturbing to see it internationally. It's really disturbing to see Americans uh, and people here in the United States of America in the streets marching in response to a call from the organization that just carried out these atrocities. I think that's very disturbing to see that play out. Now, as far as the region is concerned, look, I think the Jordanians are nervous, right, about what could happen there in their own streets. I think the Egyptians are nervous in that regard, and that's why they, don't want, they do not want to allow Palestinian refugees into Egypt. I think multiple uh, countries in the region are nervous about the, the, the views of their own population, which is why I see why I think you see some of them put out statements, even as they, uh, from a back doorway, cooperate with Israel on many things, put out these statements because they have their own streets to manage. So that's a real concern. And then the other, obviously, is, you know, we have to keep a very close eye as Israel does move into Gaza and tries to eradicate Hamas. What happens then? Does that now force or trigger a response from Hezbollah and from Iran and from other elements aligned with them? Right. And that's the part that gets... Uh, I don't think anybody should sugarcoat this. This is a very dangerous, very volatile, very unpredictable situation. Israel, there's something Israel has to do. They have to get rid of this group, and we should try to mitigate against these other things from happening, becoming a multi-front conflict. Um, but I also think we need to acknowledge that um, you know, this is a very uncertain terrain and a very dangerous one, and I think everyone's nervous about it, including every country in the region, not just Israel.